If you're thinking about a Roland TD-17 V-Drum kit, I wanna give you a good look at all the components so you can decide if it's worth the investment. Spoiler, it's worth it. For six months, I've been playing the Roland TD-17 KVX2 kit exclusively, just this, nothing else. We'll take a look at the drum pads, cymbals, the sound module, the hardware. I'll show you around the kit, demo some sounds, and at the end, I'll share a few hacks with you I've figured out along the way. I'll tell you what I like and what I think could be better. So let's get into it right now. There are two kits in the TD-17 line, the KVX2 that I've got right here and the KV2. Both kits are driven by the TD-17 sound module that contains all the samples, sounds. There are 70 preloaded drum kits, onboard effects. You can tweak, you can tune. Honestly, there's a lot you could get lost in there for days. If you do pick up one of these kits, make sure you install the version 2 update. It's free and there's a link in the description. Both kits are five piece with kick drum, snare, and three toms and pretty much everything is mounted on the included tubular rack. The primary difference between the two kits is in the cymbals. The KVX2 gives you two crash cymbals and the VH10 hi-hat, which you do need to supply your own stand for. With the less expensive KV2 kit, you get one crash cymbal and the hi-hat is handled by a CY5 cymbal pad, as well as an included hi-hat control pedal. This determines how open or closed the hi-hat sound is based on the position of the pedal. I actually just got a CY5 cymbal pad to add onto my kit as a splash cymbal or a china. There's a full review of the CY5 coming up on the channel soon. Price difference between the two kits at this time is about $400. And actually it's a little more than that when you consider that you do not have to supply your own hi-hat stand for the KV2 kit. So is the KVX2 worth more money? We'll get into that in a bit. You do not get everything you need to play right out of the box. With both kits, you're gonna have to supply a kick drum pedal and a throne. You need something to sit on. And again, with the KVX2, you're gonna need to supply your own hi-hat stand. And you're gonna need some sticks. Let's take a tour through the kit. All the drum pads are tunable mesh. You don't tune these in a musical sense but you adjust the tension to get the response and rebound that you like to dial in the feel of your kit. The snare is a PDX-12. It has an 11 and a half inch mesh head with a 12 inch rim diameter. You get dual zones, the head, the rim, and in the module, you can select for it to detect when you play a cross stick. For the toms, you get three PDX-8 drum pads. These have eight inch mesh heads and a 10 inch rim diameter. These are dual zone pads where you get the mesh head and the rim also with these. The rims are fully assignable and you don't necessarily need a rim zone for every tom on every kit. So one of the hacks to expand your kit without expanding your kit, put a closed hi-hat for when you're using a double bass pedal. Put a cowbell on one of your rims. These heads feel great. I've barely even got any signs of wear on them. If you've ever used the old rubber drum pads on an electronic kit, these mesh heads are absolutely a game changer. They gave me an extremely real feel. I can dial them into how I want them to feel. They're rugged, they're durable, and very good response. If I ever do need to replace one of the heads, looks like I can do that for about 50 bucks. One of the things I like best about the drum pads is how clean and simple they are. There's almost nothing underneath. There is a small housing that contains the trigger and the quarter inch jack to plug it into the module. I've had other electronic kits where the pads were really complicated and it made any kind of maintenance or repair extremely difficult. Both kits feature the KD-10 kick pad. It's a freestanding unit that sits right on the floor underneath the kit. I can play a double kick pedal on it. There's room for two beaters. It looks a little wobbly. It gets rocking and rolling when I'm doing double bass work, but I haven't had it scoot around on me one bit. Crashes are... Boomer, seriously, come on. Oh, you big goofball. Now for the cymbals. Crashes are the CY-12C. These are the newer thin cymbals. I was actually a little worried that they wouldn't hold up as well or feel as sturdy, but I have no complaints. They feel fantastic and I don't see anything besides a little bit of stick wear on the surface. The CY-12s are chokeable and dual zone. You get the bow and the edge of the cymbal to play. The ride cymbal is a CY-14. Again, this is a thinner, newer model. It's a three zone ride. You can play the bow, the edge, and the bell. 
this symbol is also chokeable. The hi-hats on the KVX2 are the VH10. This is a 12 inch symbol, and then the hi-hat control is handled by a unit that mounts onto the hi-hat stand. This actually makes it unbelievably realistic, and that is a big deal with electronic drums. One of the biggest difficulties I had with early electronic kits was the hi-hat. Drummers tend to be very expressive with the hi-hat. There are lots of nuances. This does a great job of capturing and reproducing those. There's a calibration process. It's very realistic, and for me, it changed electronic drums. The hardware. With either kit, you get a drum rack. It is a standard one and a half inch tubular rack. That means that if you have existing clamps or hardware from other drum kits, you will be able to use them with this rack. My initial reaction was that it looked like a very limited setup. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to get everything positioned the way I would like to, but it's actually extremely comfortable. If you look at the kit and decide where you want something to be, there's a way to get it there. The drum mounts swivel, the cymbals have ball joints, the snare has a ball joint. I've had zero problem getting it dialed in. The drum kit has a small footprint when it's put together. I use a four by six foot rug and it fits everything perfectly. I've had no stability issues with the drum rack or any of the hardware, except for the snare, which I put on its own separate snare stand. The issue that I was having was bounce. To get the snare where I wanted it, I had to have it sitting on the very end of the pole that it mounts to. So when I was playing, it was like a diving board. I would get some bounce from it. I definitely prefer the snare on its own stand. Now, the brains of the operation, the TD-17 sound module. It comes with a ton of preloaded samples. It comes with 70 preloaded kits. There's room to design and make your own kits. Within any drum kit, you can adjust the levels of each pad. You can assign different sounds to different pads. If you wanna put a gong on the rim of your floor tom, you can do that. If you want to put an explosion on your kick drum, you can do that. You have the ability to load in your own samples. If you want to record a guitar riff to trigger, you can do that. There's an SD port on the module. You can put anything you want on the SD card. That is how you load in samples. You can back up all the settings of the module, and you can also record your playing internally with the SD card. You can tweak the sounds. There are onboard effects. You can add reverb, compression, delay, chorus. You can even tune your drums. Yes, like actually tune the pitch of the drums. You can adjust the muffling, everything from no muffling at all to a pillow inside your kick drum. You can adjust the sensitivity and the crosstalk from the pads. Now that is something with this kit that I have not had to do. This is the first electronic kit I've had out of the box where when I hit the kick drum, it doesn't accidentally trigger a crash cymbal sometimes. Roland has the initial out of the box settings very dialed in for that. The module has Bluetooth capabilities, which I use all the time. So I can connect wirelessly to my phone, get some music going, and I can play along to songs that way. Apparently there's the option to do MIDI over Bluetooth, but I haven't messed around with that. I prefer to hardwire in through the USB cord. Connection to the computer is with a USB 2 cable, or you have MIDI outputs. Audio outputs are quarter inch right and left master outputs. The headphone jack is a three and a half millimeter eighth inch jack. I would love to see multi-channel output, but at this price, I wasn't expecting that. One of my favorite things about the TD-17 are the built-in practice features. Those are located under the coach menu. The time check is something I use every day when I do my 10 minute exercises. I play along to a metronome, and then the module gives me feedback whether I'm staying in time or not. Quiet count is an exercise that starts a metronome and then drops it out for a measure or two. So I can get playing with the metronome, stay in time, find that pulse, and then boop, the metronome disappears. I keep playing, hopefully in time, and then when the metronome kicks back in, I find out how well I did. Warm-ups are a function that I haven't really used very much. They give me a metronome, and then I am told to play half notes, then quarter notes, then eighth notes, then triplets, then sixteenths, then back to triplets, back to eighths, back to quarter, back to half. 
You can set different intervals of time length depending on how long you want to warm up. But for me personally, my 10 minute exercises are the perfect warm up. It is 10 different exercises for one minute each. There is a daily practice video on the channel that will explain it all. So check that out next. But yeah, the practice features, I use those all the time. Again, it's really valuable for me to get that tempo and then also get feedback on if I'm playing in time. And as we know, one of the two things that great drummers do well is play in tempo deep in the pocket. There are songs loaded into the module that of course are waiting for you to play the drums over them. These are basically short loops, 10, 15 seconds, and you can practice playing drums to other styles of music. There are a couple of rock loops. Latin. Jazz. Funk. And of course, dance music. The sounds that are preloaded into the TD-17 are pretty good sound quality. I would use these to gig. I would probably use these to record. I personally have superior drummer software that I use that I think is a step better, but the sounds in these kits are gonna do great for any live or recording situation. Okay, so a couple of notes on some of the sound features from Roland's site. There's prismatic sound modeling, and that mixes sample components and nuances on the fly. And Shun Takai of Roland says, quote, we isolate the snare drum body, wire, and overtone. The sound module mixes these sounds differently in each situation. Honestly, after playing these for a while, I buy into that. When I first sat down and hit the kick drum and I could hear the snares rattling, this is not the same cookie cutter drum sound that you get every time you play the pad. Depending on how hard you play, depending on where on the head you play, depending on what other drums and cymbals you've been playing, it's gonna sound a little bit different. It all sounds very natural to me and playing acoustic drums for so many years, there's no way I could be happy behind this kit if it didn't sound natural and convincing. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I love electronic drums. The flexibility, the control, the sounds with no effort, they're absolutely unbeatable. If you're on the fence about it, check out this video that explains why I love them so much. My first two electronic kits were not Roland, we'll say that. Uh, they were good kits. They were mid-level kits. There are some really solid choices out there for the money, and you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get a good electronic drum setup. For me personally, I was starting to have some reliability issues, primarily with my snare drum. It broke on me a couple of times. The company replaced it the first time, but then the second time I got a message back suggesting that I not hit my drum so hard in the future. Fortunately, the store that I bought them from took my side and they replaced the snare for me. Once I got that replacement snare, I did sell them to a friend with a clear conscience. They're good drums, but I play every day. I play a lot. I play loud. I play hard. I need something that's going to hold up to some abuse. One of the bands I played in, we had a Roland V-Drum kit that we gigged with. 
big summer shows, four hour sets every night. And those V drums got the crap beat out of them by multiple drummers, band members, roadies. They were set up and torn down in the hot summer sun, in the rain. I never had one triggering issue with any of those drums. The whole kit worked flawlessly night after night. So finally, I decided that I was going to step up to a Roland kit and I found a decent deal on the KVX2 here. Now, Roland V-Drums are not cheap. This is a more intermediate level kit, but it still costs about two grand. For me, it was just time to throw down and get a solid, rugged, reliable kit. Again, there are some good quality options out there, if you're learning, if you're just getting started with drums, if you're doing studio work and the drums are going to be in one place all the time, there are lots of solid drum kits out there that are less expensive than a Roland kit. But if you are serious about drums, if you are taking these things around to play places with you, I can tell you from my experiences over the last six months, it's absolutely worth every penny I spent on it. Portability. These drums are honestly much easier. First of all, they're way easier than tearing down and hauling around a full acoustic drum kit. Goodbye to the days of the giant kick drum case, having somebody hold the door for you while you try to not fall down the stairs with it. The first time I tore this kit down to take it to jam, I was amazed at how quick the process was. I can tear down in a matter of minutes. I can fit it in my car, no problem and then I can pull everything back out and have it set up in about 10 more minutes. I was able to use one of my acoustic drum cases. This is 16 inches across and 10 and a half inches deep. I can fit my snare drum and all three toms in there perfectly. The cymbals, the drum module, and all of the cabling, I keep in a padded gig bag. So yeah, traveling with this kit is super easy. Would I go on tour with it like this? No, probably not. But for jamming, gigging, taking it to another studio, it works just fine. A couple of things I do to make sure that setup goes smoothly. I put marks on any of the joints on the drum rack so that when I fold things out, they line up to the same place that they were. In the studio here, I have marks on the floor with masking tape, and that lets me know where the feet of all the components go. Here's a hack. You can buy memory locks for drum hardware. They can get pretty pricey to put all over your kit. One of the solutions I figured out that didn't cost me hardly anything. In fact, I had some sitting around in the shop. I used hose clamps. I put one on each of the mounting posts for the toms. I tightened it down just underneath. So when I go to set the kit back up, I slide the tom onto the post and it drops right down to the correct position. So a few of the promised hacks that I've found for this kit. Uh, I've already shared a couple of them with you, putting hose clamps on the tom mounts to get them to the right height every time. Here is another little hack that I found. Sometimes the display on the TD-17 can be hard to see, so I got this little reading light. And uh, I think it cost me about 10 bucks but I clip it on one of the wing nuts right here and boom, it lights up the surface of the module for me. I talked about assigning rims. So each of these pads has the head zone and the rim zone. Again, I hardly ever use the rim of any of my toms. Snare, yes, I rim shot, I cross stick, but for the toms, it's extremely rare that I use any of those. So in the module, you uncheck H and R, and that means that you can assign the head differently from the rim. So with that box checked, it is designed so that when you pick a tom tom, it will put the appropriate rim of that tom with it. If you unselect that, now you have the option to have a completely different rim sound from whatever tom you're using. Cowbell, triangle, spaceship. If you use a double kick pedal, putting a closed hi-hat sound on one of the rims, saves you from having to try and keep the hi-hat closed or use some sort of drop clutch. That way you can do double kick pedal with a closed hi-hat. Just shorten the decay to keep it closed. To take it one step further, the TD-17 has two extra inputs. The KVX-2 that comes with two crash cymbals is already using one of those inputs for triggers, the crash 2. That leaves me with one auxiliary input. I can use that for a splash. I can use it for whatever I want. But at that point, I can't do any further expanding of the kit unless I go the route of splitting the head and rim signals from some of the drums. I have found a way to add cymbals or other drums to my kit by taking the rim sound and reassigning it as a cymbal. As you may have noticed, I've got a splash cymbal right here. This is the CY5. And what I found was a splitter and this is a quarter inch 
Y splitter, and I can take the signal from the tom and I can split the head and send it to the tom, and I can split the rim and send it to a cymbal, I can send it to a percussion trigger, I can send it to another drum if I want. And then again, in the module, I can select different sounds for the head and the rim. I give up the rim sound on the tom, but it allows me to add another piece to my kit. So for the splash symbol right here, I don't need the rim on this tom. I have it split off so that the head is played when I hit the head. And then the splash is the rim sound, and I have a splash symbol assigned to it. This splitter is from a company called drumsplitters.com. Now, what I just talked about doesn't work with just any quarter inch Y splitter. Trust me, I tried using adapters that I had laying around. I tried ordering specific ones. I searched the reviews. Yes, these work with electronic drums. What I found out in that process was that you can't just use any type of splitter to do this with Roland B drum kit. The nerd answer is that one of the inputs needs to have added resistance. It's gotta be a splitter that was designed to be used with a Roland drum kit. I found a splitter that would work with this kit, but it was from some company in Germany and I would have to do overseas shipping. I wanted to find a solution for you that is easily accessible, that's affordable, and that works. And that's when I ran across drumsplitters.com. I reached out to them. Great company, great guys. He sent me one of these to check out and review for you. Uh, so I can tell you that it absolutely works. It's good quality. It's reasonably priced. What more do you want? They do have some other products up there to expand multiple things at the same time. But yeah, absolutely go check out drumsplitters.com. There's a link in the description. Right now, I could expand one, two, three. I could add three pieces to this kit. I could keep the head sounds, and then using the rim sounds, I could add two more cymbals, another drum. I can do whatever I want. So one of these splitters, 20 bucks, you're good to go to add pieces to your kit. And one of my biggest concerns with the kit initially was the expandability or lack thereof. Okay, which brings us to the cons, uh, the things about the kit that I think could be better. There's really not much. Expandability was a big one. That was top on my list, and I found a great way to resolve that. Another one of the limitations of this drum kit, I don't have multi-channel output. I don't have a separate quarter inch output on the back of the module for the kick drum, one for the snare, one for the toms, one for each thing independently. All of the drums and cymbals are connected to the module with a snake that has a multi-pin connector. So when you're in a studio or live situation, having independent control over each of these components is a really big deal. This kit has master outputs, a stereo pair left and right. I can do some work inside the kit in the module where I can adjust levels in there. So in theory, I could get to a gig and I could work with the sound engineer and we could tweak a kit or two and probably get it to sound good. Uh, I would certainly gig with that, but for any multi-track like serious studio recording, I would want to have multi-channel output. In that case, I would use the USB or a MIDI cable and I would record to MIDI and I would be multi-track triggering sounds within the recording software. The stereo pair is gonna work fine in a lot of situations, but if you're getting into really serious gigging or studio recording, you're gonna wanna have multi-channel output. As far as the hardware goes, again, like I said, it's solid, it's simple. Uh, the only thing I would like to be able to do would be to remove some of the mounting clamps from the hardware without having to disassemble the entire tube. It would be really nice if the clamps actually separated in half so that I could remove a clamp, move it to a different part on the rack without having to tear the whole rack tube apart and slide it off the end. I mentioned earlier the snare stand. So the snare typically goes on a pole that slides out perpendicular to the kit so it's horizontal to the ground and the snare mounts on that pole. And what I noticed was having the snare at the end of that pole created a diving board effect. So as I would play the snare, it would get bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. My remedy for that was to just put the snare on its own stand. And now actually I use that crossbar to mount my splash cymbal. So the question was posed before, is the KVX2 worth the extra money? For me, 100% absolutely. Having a VH10 hi-hat that is very expressive, very realistic, that's a big deal for me. The other reason that it's worth it is because I get another crash symbol with the package. 
These symbols are not inexpensive on their own. I would probably be better off buying an entry level Roland V drum kit and using those drums, cymbals, hardware to expand this kit. Buying these things a la carte gets very expensive very quickly. My recommendation for you, I would encourage you to go find a music store that has one of these kits set up. Walk in like you own the place, find the kit, grab some sticks, and sit down, adjust the kit, get it comfortable, put some headphones on, and start playing around with it. Any good music store should have no problem with you sitting down and trying out something that you're thinking about buying, especially when it's a big purchase like a V-Drum kit. Play with the sounds, move the cymbals around. When I did this at one of my local music stores, this kit was set up all kinds of funky. It was beat up, but you know what? Everything on it worked and worked just fine. I thought that was a great example of the rugged reliability of these V-drums. If you have questions about anything specific, please put that in the comments. If there's anything you'd like to see a deeper dive into, let me know and I will consider that for future videos. Now click into this video to hear some more sounds from the TD-17 module and I will see you over there. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon.